<laughs> yeah, exactly. So, Tom, maybe you could tell us a little bit more about these runners, and we're going to get match number 45 ready to go. All right. So you're back to Mr. Alex. He's a too tall Toby black t-shirt, just like yeah. myself. You know what? I think I have two t-shirts. Yeah. But one's black, and I forget what the other color one is. I think it's like you know, it's like green or something. It's like that. Oh, well, that's Army the old green. school one. Yeah. Nice. But uh, if I win this tournament, too tall Toby must say how tall he is in millimeters, inches, plus or minus one without cap. Wow. No cap. No cap. This, uh, I like and that. And Eric uh, grew up homeschooled on a sailboat. Wow. But going around the world with that, that's pretty wild. Yeah. Um, uh, this 2023 tournament, qualification due to being busy, uh, in, the, in the boat race. Uh, hate the only black in my past was for the loop. Proudly serving three cats in an Alaskan Malamute. Cats and dogs living together. Mass hysteria. Yeah. True. True. Guys, I think we're in for a treat here. If that last match was any indicator, then this next match between Mr. Alex and Airwick. SolidWorks versus On Shape is going to be absolutely epic. And this match between this CAD battle between SolidWorks and On Shape begins in three, two, one, go. What is the mass of this part in XXX grams? The tolerance on this part is plus or minus two grams. Both of our runners are grabbing a screen capture of this print. Both of our runners have already jumped into their models and are beginning their first sketches. So it, it just happens that fast. It's amazing to me how quickly they can look at a 2D print, come up with a solution for that 2D print, or at least a game plan, and get right into sketching. It usually takes me a few minutes to kind of plan things out. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, on this one, I'd, I'd go with the top uh, just to start out. Uh, I see lots of uh, anti-Ivan exploits built in, which is good. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And this part, the, the, the kind of tricky thing about this part is on that rear upper rectangular section, three of the walls have draft. One of them does not. So that's, I think, a little bit mm. tricky. That kind of square cut going through that, that rear section is also a little bit tricky. So we're going to see how these guys handle this. Looks like both of our runners are kind of taking your advice starting out on the top plane. And either laying out a lot of times on shape users, a lot of times lay out the geometry because it's very easy to use and reuse the same sketch over and over again, uh, where SolidWorks users tend to keep it a little bit more discreet, you know, one sketch, one feature. So we'll see. You can do it in SolidWorks. It's just, you know, it hides it right away. So you have to unhide it. Hides it. Yeah. Or you go to extrude and it's like, oh, you probably want a thin feature. Right. 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 I'm like, <laughs> no, no, I, I, I don't at all. <laughs> You know, I hate when software, any software, tries to be helpful. It's usually not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So really, really interesting. Once again, two wizards from two different areas of the world using two different CAD systems, both starting out with almost the exact same sketch. They've it, even, it is the exact same sketch. Yeah, they it's even just both like <laughs> just had half of it. Yeah. Wow. And so now we see uh, Mr. Alex using SolidWorks, using that contour selection like we just were talking about, uh, going through, uh, getting a, a, the software trying to be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, no, Mr. Alex. It's been getting, a little unhelpful. Getting though. a little bit caught up here. Yeah, on this very first feature. There we go. He's back in the groove. He's got it. Shake it off. And Airwick already there with three features from that very first sketch. So very, very speedy there with that uh, kind of like multiple extrusions coming off of that first sketch. Very impressive. I think that the ability, you know, the ability to use feature scripts in Onshape uh, is a real game changer, uh, both for these tournaments, but also just kind of for, for the real world in general, um, hmm. because it's just there's such a prevalence of feature scripts available. There's, there's you know, people are creating them all the time and posting them in the public space. So. Uh, interesting here, interesting result uh, that Eric is is running into here on that feature. So, okay, had to uncheck tangent propagation. Look at that draft was continuing on to those lower faces. And we see Mr. Alex applying the draft as well to these three faces. So once again, our runners are really neck and neck. I mean, look at this geometry. Look at how close the geometry is for both of our runners. Eric look yes. at, looking like he's noticing maybe some type of a problem with his uh, original geometry. He's trying to go through and clean that all up. Looks like it took care of it. Mm-hmm. Mr. Alex already on that upper rectangular cutout 
Looks like he, I would say that Mr. Alex has now pulled ahead a little bit. Just slightly. I mean, uh, he's, he is having to do things twice because he, he didn't use any mirror, uh, at, at least at this point. Mm -hmm. He's already passed the mirroring. Yeah, he's got exactly. He's kind of past the point of modifying that. Mm -hmm. And very interesting to see Airwick getting through, finishing up that sketch, and now turning it into a cut extrude. Really, this is like a tennis match. Like, just have to keep looking left and right and left and right. Yeah, it is. I'm, <laughs> if you see my head, it's going back and forth. <laughs> yeah, for sure. They're both drawing the exact whole set sketch at the same time. This is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like we're watching like a RDC connection or something. <laughs> really, really cool. I, one one thing I've noticed about Airwick, I've seen him use that move that he just used there quite often. He'll sketch a rectangle with construction lines and use that oh, for the yeah. XY location of a hole. I've seen him do that in many of his speed runs, in the leaderboard challenges, things like that. And I think it's a really unique and very efficient uh, approach yeah. to kind of get your holes located. So, wow, these guys I've, are... I've done stuff like that where you, you draw the rectangle, but then you also draw a diagonal and you get the midpoint too. Sure, know? yep. So now both of our runners kind of coming down the home stretch here and we see Airwick going for an answer. We're not going to we're not going to say if it's right or wrong until it shows up in the chat. Airwick coming in with an answer, 315 grams. And that is correct. Nice. And wow, wow, wow. These guys are so close. We're going to let Mr. Alex finish out here. He's so close. He's right there at the end of this thing. So we're going to just see if uh, Mr. Alex wants to, to proceed and wants to come up with a mass. But uh, I'm willing to bet that he's going to come up with 315 as well. Let's go. Here we go. <laughs> we're, get, we're getting some background noise for me there, Tom. I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, though. that's my, my, my dog snoring I was wondering under my feet. If that was like a dog snoring. <laughs> <laughs> All right. SPO.